Last week, I think, I did a review video of the Rapid Fire module and I really did like it. It had some really impressive features, looked very good and it was slickly put together. One thing I didn't have time to do was check how it worked on my very original Emotion RC 600 VTXs. And I wanted to go back and just check this because I was having problems with the new sort of wave of diversity receivers. Now, being in FPV for a few years it means I've got a whole bunch of these things. Just looking behind me on my wall, I've got one here in my Bixler. There's another one here in my Raven Wing. Another in the Buffalo Wing. That needs repair. And this is my Falcon Wing, which I used for testing. There it is. Sat there amongst all the glue. This also had the old PZ0420 board camera, which at the time was the pinnacle and it all connects through this autopilot. Now, back in the day, this is what you could get, and here's my spares box. I have found another four of these because it's it's what I used to buy all the time. Um, and it was either these, or you bought these 200 milliwatt Boscam VTXs. Eight channels each, both on different bands, and with the Motion RC ones, you could actually use a fat sharp receiver. And this is what it looks like in comparison to something slightly more modern, not particularly up to date, but you get the idea. They are much bigger, they're much thicker, they're much heavier than the modern equivalent. However, I've got some kicking around, lots of them, which I'd prefer to sort of use, but instead of not use. Um, and here's the sort of receiver we had. No LED, no diversity, eight channels. Uh, this is the Fat Shark uh, Next Wave RF. Really great picture and a significant improvement upon the original receiver you got on the Fat Shark goggles. And this is what it looks like. This was from... 2016 and flying that falcon wing and the reason i was making this video is i went out and i flew on the next wave module um, out about a kilometer and, and back again because i wanted to test it next to the rx5808 diversity module from relac that i just picked up which is where i noticed the problem but you'll see here we've got good picture i mean ignore the the interference and the static what you're looking for is is how well the pitch is actually comprised of we've got a good picture you can see the OSDs remains nice even when we turn it into the very bright sunlight here we don't have a problem seeing all the details it's all good and that's the thing we measure things against so having tested the next wave module and this is still back in 2016 I landed the plane swapped my module over to the uh, Relac RX5808 and relaunched. And this one looks like, and you'll notice we've got a few sort of bright, uh, you kind of call them bars, which occasionally move around the screen. I mean, I'm getting some, some bit of nasties from the ESC here. But what is most significant about this picture is when we do the turn um, and the amount of screen warping and sort of corruption as it were seems to be directly correlated to the amount of brightness or the amount of whites you get on the screen so on this turn as we come back into the sunlight you can see we've got some sort of distortion on the screen the OSD goes a bit crazy we've got those sort of bar bandings um, and what I learned is that the the modulation upon the original um, Immersion RC 600 milliwatts, the new wave of receivers didn't follow the sort of spec for them, so they had a compatibility issue. Now, these were reissued, and there was an update to them, uh, which was slightly different, which should work with them, but of course, those aren't the ones I have. I, I was doing this in 2012, and I have the original ones. So, fast forward to today, or in fact, a couple of days ago, and this is me testing out with the rapid fire module. Now I've started off using the normal rapid fire mode and now I don't I don't put the the rapid fire OSD on the screen so you can't see the lock or not but I could hear the beeping in the goggles that kept saying it's lost the lock it's regained the lock um, and it kept doing it multiple times. Now obviously there was an issue trying to lock onto this signal and you can see that the screen's not particularly happy and it wasn't a particularly nice way to fly. It's an old camera, the PZ0420, but quite a popular one. And it was one of the first cameras to use the, the Sony 
Super had two CCD sensors, which is a pretty pretty popular chip in in terms of uh, what was around and and what tended to be around. And you can see in the sun again, we get the the, the big banding. However, uh, one thing that the rapid fire allows you to do is run in legacy mode. So I came in to land and took it up again after changing to legacy mode. Um, and here's what legacy mode looks like, and it is generally a lot better. You will see there's just a little bit of that sort of light banding up the top and the sort of the bottom third of the screen. Now, you can be sort of forgiven for thinking, is that just some sort of interference or ear C noise or something? But back on the next wave days, this is what we didn't get. So range doesn't seem to be a factor in this when we're going in this direction. And again, we went up to about just about a kilometer just to check it out. And the problem occurred in the turn when we went back into the sun. Okay, so as we turn, we see that sort of bar has a lot more of an issue. And as we start to fill the screen more with light, that's when we see this kind of this wobble in the screen and this really weird stuff, which looks very much like the original um, RX 5808 stuff. It doesn't seem quite as bad going out, and I don't know if that's just because of the amount of colour or light on the screen or what, but this certainly seems to have a problem. Now, it could be argued that I am somewhat of a corner case here. Um, I'm using very old Immersion RC 600 milliwatt VTXs along with a very old camera, but it seems like rapid fire doesn't seem to want to play with it and I was actually told it should do so I'm gonna pass this on to Immersion RC and see if they've got um, an answer for me or see if it's something that might be fixable and uh, if that gets updated I'll let you know what happens but in the meantime I hope that's of some help and I will catch you in the next one bye for now well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.